All right. Oh, man, that mic came out. Did y'all feel that? Y'all felt that. I'm just testing my mic. Uh, good morning, Image Church. How are y'all doing this morning? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Are y'all doing well this morning? Man, uh, did that hour uh, step from Springboard, did it hit you in the face a little bit? All right. How about my parents with kids? Did it hit you in the face? Oh, my gosh, we got you. But God, we're so glad to be here this morning. I uh, had some extra coffee, so maybe that's why my voice is uh, a little protruding through the microphone this morning. But we're just so glad that you decided to worship with us today. Uh, we're going to uh, continue in our Baywatch series, and we're going to talk about a topic today that the church needs to talk more about, amen? And you in your married context need to talk more about, and that is the topic of Sex. So let me preclude this. If you have some children in here that you don't want to hear about sex, we're going to say sex a lot today. Y'all get it out of your spirit. Say sex. Okay, we're going to say that a lot today. So if you don't want to hear, you have your child hear that word, I'm going to ask them to go to the uh, children's area. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's all bow for a word of prayer. Let's bow for a word of prayer uh, quickly. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. Father, we thank you, God, for allowing us to be here today, Father. Father, we um, Father, we just need a word from you today, God. We need your spirit. We need your revelation. God, this topic here is a topic that is separating marriages, Father. And Father, we pray, God, today that we paint the picture holistically, that we show the beautiful glory that you have with this topic of sex. God, we're praying that you heal sexual wounds today. If there's anyone who came in here today wounded, God, we pray for their healing and their transformation and their rest in the gospel today, Father. So, Father God, we bless your name. Have your way today in this worship service. In your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Sex, sex, sex. Okay? We're going to talk about that today. Uh, get it out. Sex and marriage. So what we want to do as a church is we always said that the world has a way of painting uh, an idea of what a particular topic is, whether it's sex, whether it's marriage, whether it's parenting. And what we have to do as a church and what I feel is my calling as a pastor is to paint for you what the word of God says, what sex is, what the original intent of a particular topic is, is in your life and how you're supposed to apply that. So we know what the world has said about sex, and we can uh, watch how sex has slowly in our culture become very taboo, right? There's no, uh, there's no holiness in the topic of sex. You watch any series on Netflix or Hulu uh, or whatever, you, whatever your uh, streaming service is, they are painting a picture of sex in your mind, and it is an unhealthy view of sex. And what we want to do as a church is we want to paint for you what the Word of God says about the topic of sex. But the church, we, we, I'm going to also confess and, and, and ask forgiveness as a pastor, been in the church all, all, all my life, is the church has not done a good job of painting the picture of sex. It's been a topic that we have not discussed. We've kind of pushed it to the side. Uh, we've been big on don't have gay sex, right, or or, 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 or uh, same sex, uh, same sex, right? We've been big on that. We've been big on premarital sex, right? Your mama don't have sex before you get married. Right? We all know that story in the church. But one thing we have not talked about, uh, and we've talked, haven't said extramarital sex, so sex outside of the marital covenant, when you're married, having sex with another person. We've spoken very profoundly about those sexual encounters. But what we have not painted is, how do you enjoy this beautiful picture of sex within your marriage. Sex is good. Sex is beautiful uh, within the confinements of marriage. And we want to paint that paint that for you today. But there are three purposes for sex. And I think Pastor gave me this one because he's trying to be funny. <laughs> but the first one is procreation. Mm. Genesis 1 and 28 says, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. The point is that God has created sex for us to multiply little image bearers of himself. So we were created in God's image. The point, the, one of the points of sex is to create other kids or 
um, little tiny people that reflect God's image. So procreation is one of the purposes of sex. And so once you understand that, uh, if you're single or if you're married, you won't, you'll, uh, you'll carry more weight when you encounter in sexual uh, encounters, all right? So most, most people, before they uh, become married and you're, uh, you're young, you're lost, and you're spreading your seed and you're having sex with multiple partners, and you don't understand that the, one of the purposes of sex is procreation, okay? And then procreation happens, and you're wondering why there's confusion, there's frustration. Uh, procreation is a purpose for sex. So when you understand that, and when you encounter in a sexual encounter, you must understand that that is a possibility that may happen with procreation, because that's one of the purposes of sex from the beginning. But not just for procreation, because we've done a good job of procreating, and we as a church, we want you to procreate more, amen? I want you all to have more kids. I'm looking over here. I want more children in this section. Amen. I want more children up here. All right. We're going to pray for husbands. I heard the Lord pray. hadn't told me that one yet. I'm yeah, but procreation is beautiful. And that's, that's a result of sex. Uh, but also sex is meant to be pleasurable. Okay. Sex is supposed to feel good. It's supposed to be fulfilling. It's supposed to be this euphoria that comes during the time of sex and after sex, right? So sex is created for pleasure, right? We must, we must paint that picture. If you can turn to uh, Proverbs 5, 15 through 19, I'm going to read this verse, uh, verse with you. All right, when you get there, please say amen. All right. And so this verse starts out, says, drink water from your own what? Cistern. Cistern. Flowing water from your own well. Should your springs be scattered abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be uh, for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. A lovely deer, a graceful doe, let her breasts fill you at all times with delight and be intoxicated always in her love. So I like how the scripture paints uh, the picture that we are to drink water from our own cistern, our own. our own, right? God has given you a spouse to engage in this sexual encounter. You should be willing to discuss and have a open conversation with your wife about the pleasure of sex that you don't ever need to go to the outside resources to find, to, to, to fulfill it, mm -hmm. okay? Because the pleasure, right, as the writer's saying, the pleasure was meant to be fulfilled within the marital covenant, mm -hmm. okay, never outside. Right, so if you're not finding pleasure within that, that doesn't give you a reason to go outside. And what it does give you a reason to is to talk about how can we find pleasure in this union. The okay? grass ain't always green up <laughs> So drink water, drink water from your own cistern. Mm. Right, have sex with your wife, have sex with your husband. This is something that you all should be doing. Mm -hmm. And then it says God designed us to have sex with one person, your own cistern, flowing water. Mm -hmm. But I like verse 18. It says. Uh, so that your, found, your your fountain may be blessed, okay? Look, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth, okay? Understand the words it is using here. Blessing, rejoice, lovely, graceful, intoxicated. What they're painting here is a beautiful picture of sex in between a husband and wife and one that it should be pleasurable, okay? Look at the words they're using. Rejoice, right? We all come to church and we rejoice, right? But the scripture is saying in your sexual encounter, rejoice. I heard a pastor say that sex is worship. Sex is worship, okay? And I like how the writer gets a little description with her breasts, right? Her breasts, it gives a description picture of seeing a her, her, her in her, her naked form or him in her, her naked form, right? Um and so it's talking about sex with your, with your mate. But also it talks about um, uh, let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Right? Let her breasts fill you with all times. Okay? You're, uh, are we okay in here? Am I saying breasts too many times? All right. Uh, y'all okay with this, right? When we were born, we were naked, all right? So well, I'm okay, y'all? Right, this is not a PG-13 sermon okay so i hope y'all okay with this okay but there should be some satisfaction 
Mm-hmm. Within the sex between your, 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 male, your male mate. Okay? Sex outside of marriage is not fulfilling. Okay? Broken, broken lives, misconceptions, right? We all know the things that come with that, right? Side piece sex, right, is not fulfilling, right? Because you got issues in your home, right? You got, ultimately, it's going to come out, okay? But what should be fulfilling, there's no better sex that you should be having in your life than sex with your mate, okay? So you should be looking for ways to please your wife. She should be looking at ways to please you, right? Because within the context, we're finding ways to make sure sex is pleasurable within the context. Amen? Amen. All right. But also, we want to talk about sex is meant for procreation. It's meant for pleasure. But it's also meant for protection. And I want to catch this, okay? If we can all turn to 1 Corinthians 7, 2 through 5, please. It reads, be because of sexual temptation, sexual morality, temptation of sexual morality, each man should have his own wife and each her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, okay? Do not deprive one except for the perhaps of agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer. But then come together again so that what? Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Sex within marriage is protection from sexual temptation that happens outside of the, outside of the marital covenant, right? Whether it be uh, with another person, whether it be pornography or whatever thing. Sex is your escape from sexual temptation, Okay. So we all have these sexual desires as men and women, right? And if we don't fulfill those sexual desires within the marital covenant, what we're doing is we're inviting the enemy into our home. We're inviting the enemy into our minds. And what the scripture is saying is, do not withhold sex from your mate, all right? If you don't deal with your sex issue, you're going to end up having a big marital issue. Okay, if you don't deal with the topic of sex, if you don't deal with the, unless you're praying, okay, ain't that much prayer in the world, okay, fasting and praying, ain't that much prayer in the world. I asked pastor do the 21 days of fasting count as a time. And I said no, amen. (laughs) Pastor wasn't agreeing to that, okay, (laughs) unless we agree upon that, (laughs) unless we agree and say, hey, baby, we're going to abstain. God hadn't revealed that to me yet, okay. Okay, but if we agree upon that, then we withhold, right? But if it's not agreeable, we need to be uh, talking about it and figuring out how we're going to encounter in sexual uh, relationships. It's meant for protection from sexual immorality, right? So uh, your wife, it's meant for protection, right? Protection from the world. So we got to be uh, uh, encountering in sex within the marriage, amen? Also, there are some barriers to sexual intimacy, I know we talked about how it's good, but there are some things that are within sex that can prove as a challenge going forward in a marriage. Um, The first one is selfish motives. Wow. All you think about is how to fulfill yourself Mm. and not your spouse. Um, Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, Mm. not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. Mm. How are you serving your spouse? Mm. When you incur, when you approach sex, are you just thinking about yourself? Mm. Are you thinking about your spouse as well? So do nothing out of selfish ambition, because I tell you, it will bite you in the long end. Mm. You have to be courteous kind, loving, especially men, when you approach women who have experienced certain hurts in life, you have to be cautious on how you approach sex and not just think about yourself. Mm. Uh, so another barrier to, to sexual intimacy is sexual immorality, right? And I want to break this down into three formats. One, emotional uh, sexual morality. This is uh, having sex outside of the male covenants with another person without sexual contact. Mm. So you can be emotionally tied to another person, 
uh, mentally, hoping that that person was your wife or husband, right? And you are connecting, man, if I had my shot with him or her, it's going down, okay? It's going down. Not thinking that every time I think about him or her, I need to focus on how I can fulfill that within my marital covenant, okay? So you can be emotionally tied to someone else, right? And that can be a form of sexual immorality in your mind, right? Because sexual immorality is not just... Um, uh, exchanging the physical contact. Uh, Jesus said, if you lust after someone, you've committed sexual immorality in your heart. So your heart can be with somebody else without actually having to be with that person, right? So you got to be very careful of that. So that's one form of sexual immorality. The other one is the physical, right? You all in, right? You are, you got the side cheek, you got the side boob, right? And uh, my wife is not going to get all of me if someone is getting a cut of the pie, Okay. She deserves all of me, the entire pie, right? I'm not cutting up slices and giving up to Sally, Susie, and and and, um, and whoever the names are, right? She gets all of me. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters, okay? You will either love one or hate the other, right? You can't be with your side chick, baby. I love my wife, but you got a boo on the side. It just don't work like that. If you really love your wife, you wouldn't have the side boo. Okay, so that is one barrier. So if you are encountered in a physical, if you're not getting fulfillment from your spouse, okay, going outside and fulfilling that with someone else is not acceptable. You have to deal with the issue with her. Okay, if you don't ever deal with the issue with her, you start getting fulfillment outside. You have already written your ticket for divorce. It's going to eventually happen. Okay, so when your sexual issue comes in your marriage, you have to deal with it with your spouse. But here's another one that I want to talk about, right, which is virtual sexual immorality. Okay, and this is something I want to talk about with pornography with men, because the enemy has a new way of capturing the minds and the hearts of people. Right. He didn't have to. So he's not just after your body, but if he can get your mind, if he can get you fantasizing about something virtual, something that is not even real, something that is fake, false, and they are, are the studies show that they are the, the porn industry as a whole is larger than the NFL franchises. Right? This is a big business. And men, women, we have to deal. We are caught up in a pornography issue. One is gonna thwart our mind of what sex is. Right? You watch your brother on the film, be like, man, ain't no way I can be like brother on the film, right? I mean, let's be real, right? And you come home and you got those insecurities thinking that you're going to be doing that to your wife, right? And so all of a sudden, you all can't form the image of sex because you've got an image of Junior who's selling sex, but you can't form the image of what this sex is supposed to look like, okay? And you got this mental picture. Also, pornography... Uh, ruins the frequency of sex, right? Because we're in this this age of where it is instant. It's on your phones. It's on your computers. You can just instantly get it whenever you want it, okay? But that's how many married folks say that's not really how it works, amen? Right? There's some things that we need to do, talk talk about uh, with the sex. And right? Pastor, just to kind of piggyback on yeah. that, protection of your children of these things. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. As a nurse practitioner, I recently came back from a conference two years ago that talked about the average age of introduction for pornography for children is nine. So the pop-ups on the screens that you're allowing them to play games alone is an introduction. Mm. There was one little boy who talked about his struggle at nighttime. He would steal the phone and go upstairs and watch pornography because the it, physiologically, it's an addiction it's to the drug. Brain. It's, it's drug. the same equivalent as crack cocaine. Mm. The same parts of the lobes light up as when a drug addiction as it does with a pornography addiction. So what I'm saying, I say this to say there are real addictions going on inside and outside of marriages. Mm. And pornography is an addiction in which people need help. Um, so that's some and, and, and it's slow introductions, mm. y'all. 
social media. Mm. And that's why my husband and I have been very gentle in our approach with allowing our son to have social media because the pop ups, mm. it's just it's women that don't got no clothes on. And man, we can see what you like. Mm. Like if you're married and you liking this lady who butt all out and got, we see those likes. Like we can look through your, we can see what you like because it automatically will pop up on feeds. So we can mm. see that. It's dangerous in a marriage if you marry and you liking women who don't got no clothes on. Mm. That's a problem because that's telling me you're lusting after something. And I, I know I don't look like her. <laughs> so that's a problem. But it, But it's so fake, gentlemen. It's fake. Okay, you you you. And so you paint this picture of a woman who's got all this together, which is probably purchased. Okay, she bought it for a good price, mm -hmm. but she ain't. She can't hold down the home, mm -hmm. right? She can't hold down the kids, mm -hmm. right? She ain't serving in the church, Praying. right? She had earned right the right. She had had three children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She hasn't started. So with this criteria that you have based on a physical image, you don't see the work, mm -hmm. right? And I love my wife because she is a wonderful mother, a wonderful wife, has a nonprofit, a wonderful pastor's wife. She is a worker, okay? And so you, this whole image of, of, and she fine, all right? And she fine. Let me get that too. Let me get that too, okay? But, but, but selling this image of something that is not false, the enemy church is after Ooh. your mind, right? If I can get his mind, any kid's mind. If I can get his mind, mm -hmm. right? If I can distort the image, I could destroy this. He's trying to destroy generations. I can destroy your kids. There's generations, and so the reason why I bring up kids is because talking to kids about sex is important. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, as adults, and I think our parents didn't know how to talk to us about sex, and mm -hmm. so I think children therefore experimented because they didn't have a true conversation about what sex is. Sit down with your child and talk to them about puberty, their body, what happens, and healthy relationships are important. Mm -hmm. But this virtual is, y'all, these big, kids. Y it's big, um, You know, just being introduced to pornography at a young age will capture them for the rest of their life. And mm -hmm. it will be marriage struggles that you have. And these men and women, there are mm -hmm. women who struggle with it too, mm -hmm. um, are true addictions. And so don't treat it as though it's something that they could just give up. Because it doesn't work that easy. Mm. So just try to protect, and I say that as a mother, no, try to real. protect your marriage with your husband. If there's something that's going on, or wife, and you need help with that, seek counseling. But try, y'all, try with these kids with social media. Just mm. try to protect them. So, uh, and then other thing is just a lack of communication, right? Lack of communication. We just got to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Talk about it, right? If you got a frequency problem, just say, hey, babe, we ain't had sex in, in two years, okay? I'm just joking, y'all. <laughs> if, if it's two years, you, you're going to be in pastor's office having camps and counseling, all right? But seriously, if there, if you have a frequency problem, say, hey, I got these urges. Babe, I'm not getting fulfilled enough. Why can't we be grown folk and talk about that? Mm -hmm. Okay? Baby, you when you did this to me, when you said this to me when we were doing that, I didn't like that, mm -hmm. okay? Or I like it when you do this, mm -hmm. Okay? Can we be grown for? This ain't PG-13. We married. We all having sex. I know y'all. we having babies, right? I mean, let's be grown and have grown conversations with, this isn't pleasing me. This I don't like when you do this, right? I like it when you do this. So we need to just communicate with sex. If we're not getting it frequently or if we're having too much or this is not enough, we need to have a meeting and have a negotiation have a on meeting, that, right? Have, have, have a meeting. Have, have a formal a meeting. meeting. Put it on our calendar, all right? <laughs> And, and look, we took it. We said we took, we got Tylenol. Okay, it ain't a migraine, okay? okay? We already know. We finished with that. We went part. to the doctor. It ain't no migraine issues, okay? okay? <laughs> All right. False expectations. That's my point. So, false expectations. A lot of times, I think um, people have the perception coming out of marriage, going into marriage, the sex drive is like this erotica. And a lot of times things happen within a marriage that it does start that way, but it changes. Um, and so I think women's bodies tend to change differently than men's bodies do, especially after childbirth. Um, so you need to talk about what the expectation are and help each other understand if you have false expectations. 
talk about the comfort level with your spouse. Mm. Um, my other two points are wounded women. Mm. I think a lot of men do not understand that there are some wounded women. And I think there are wounded men too, because the research shows one in every one six, six men have been sexually, sexually molested. Abuse. One in every six men have been sexually That's molested. Um, there's also reports that women, um, I'd like to see in Michelle Obama. She said, I have had the fortune been, I have been fortunate enough to not be sexually molested and I'm the lucky one. You think that's the norm, but it's not the norm. Mm. The norm is that little girls have been touched. Mm. They have been manipulated by men. They have been molested. They have been wounded. And some of these girls, she says, have paper cuts, Mm. which means every time you touch slightly, it hurts. But some of these women have deep wounds. And when you're dealing with this, you have to be gentle and going into a marriage. You have to understand that because if you if your wife has been sexually abused, that's the norm. Not the fact that she has not been sexually abused or or not even just sexually abused, manipulated by a man Mm -hmm. or dominated by a man or felt uncomfortable in which she's been spoken to in an appropriate manner. And so you need to understand what you're approaching within the marriage. So wounded women, number one, the last point is physical reasons. Sometimes physical reasons can be barriers to sex. It's not just that I don't want to. There's research that shows women after childbirth, there's a decrease in testosterone, they're fatigued, and they have a lack of a sex drive. It is physiological. It is not something that she just made up in her mind. After childbirth, and some women before childbirth, you can go get free testosterone levels drawn to see if you have decreased testosterone. And you can be seen by a doctor and given testosterone to help increase. And that increases other things within hormones. But there is a hormonal imbalance sometimes in women. And men, um, there's a there's a problem there too sometimes. Um, <laughs> like with erection, there's a little blue pill <laughs> called Viagra. No, this is serious stuff. I think we have to talk about the physical reasons mm. that people are struggling with sex in a marriage because... Mm. There's physical issues going on. And so women, if you feel like you have a decreased drive and you just can't, you need to be seen by a physician because you may have a decreased testosterone level. And men, if you cannot have an erection, you need to be seen by a doctor. It can be fixed, right? Yeah. Right. Yep. All right. Um, So as we move forward, keys to sexual intimacy. So I'm going to talk about healing these wounds. If you've been with a woman who has been cut, whether it's a paper cut or a deep cut, I would encourage her to go to counseling. Research shows that group therapy counseling is better with sexual abuse victims and men too. Um, To be in a group setting with other people who have experienced the same thing. Um, I think the other thing that you need to do is understand that her sexual experience happened at a young age. And typically uh, when it happens prematurely, it's associated with power domination, um, women feeling shame. And so when you approach that within a marriage context, and now that she's older in her mind, she feels like this is shameful. You are dominating me that I have no more control over this situation. And so when you approach sex in a marriage, allow her to be the dominant person, allow her to decide what it is that you do and do not want to do. Also, If you are having a sexual experience and she gets a flashback of something that happens, stop. Do not continue. Mm. Stop what you're doing. Just hold each other or something, but just stop. Don't allow it to progress because then she associates those things with what has happened. Mm. Um, And so therapy and discuss violations with her. What is a violation? What is something that she feels uncomfortable doing or does not want to do? And agree and a ne- negotiate within the marriage that these, okay, but we're not going to do those things mm. because those are painful wounds. Yeah. And so. And then the other thing, something, brothers, we must learn because, brothers, we're like a light switch, okay? Uh, on and off, right? Uh, women are, are more emotional. It's like a, like almost like a, a crock pot, right? You build up to, to the moment. Mm-hmm. Man, it just you just plug it in, push the on button, and it's, it's we good. We cooking. Microwave, all right? microwave, all right? Uh, but men, men and women are different. So what I've what I've learned and what, what we've learned is to be intimate beyond having sex. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't just 
wait for the moment to be intimate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, int intimacy is more than sex, mm -hmm. right? When we're around the house, right? Are, are we loving each other? Are we kissing mm -hmm. only during sex? Or are we kissing during the week? Mm -hmm. Man, if we're kissing only during the sex, that's a problem, right? Are we hugging? Are we um, cuddling, right? Are we just being intimate, right? C capturing the heart rather than working on just the action, right? And I didn't mean to do the hand expression, but um, whether just focusing on the action, we're focusing on mm -hmm. our life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Loving each other. Mm -hmm. So we need to find ways to be intimate, whether it's buying gifts, whether it's dating your wife, going on a date night, right? Having conversations that don't include the end game, mm -hmm. right? Right? Because most of the time we just think whenever the, it gets the moment, the music, brothers, I know it out of mind, the, the moment's right. You're like, man, it's about to be a home run. Dog. It's just about to be a home run. And in her mind, she's thinking like, I'm tired. I just want to just cut off, okay? And so we have to figure out not, the end game is not always sex. Mm -hmm. The end game is connecting with her heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the end game. And brothers, trust me, when you connect with their heart, mm -hmm. more sex will come. Mm -hmm. Pastor, okay? let me help you. Please, help me. So leave a note on the pillow. Uh-oh. Light a candle. Light a candle. What Make a, a special on? dinner. Turn them off. Prepare a special dinner, mm. right? Flowers. I don't care if your wife tells you she hates flowers, don't spend no money on flowers, she don't want no flowers. Every woman loves flowers. Everyone, yeah. Buy her flowers. It's not about okay. her. She, if she don't like flowers. I don't care. She said, I ain't going to talk to you for two years. <laughs> when she get them flowers on her job, it's on. Yeah. So I'm just telling you, buy her flowers. It's about the recognition with her coworkers. It, oh, girl, who bought you it that? It ain't about that, Pastor. My boo, my boo. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so intimacy beyond sex is important because, and re sex therapists actually say it's good to be intimate 15 minutes a day non-erotica type mm. of stuff like just holding hands kissing mm. talking to each other mm. carving out 15 minutes yeah. a day Can oh, you oh, okay i'm sorry finish? go finish your point uh, talking 15 minutes a day um outside of sex um and then they oh well, i'm not gonna say the rest i'm gonna let you say the rest but 15 minutes plan 15 minutes to just talk get to know each other have a relationship okay all right so we talked about right here, you messed up my notes, uh -uh, okay okay <laughs> Uh, and then just talk about sex. Have, have a conversation. Uh, just like finances, something we want to discuss. You got to just sit down and talk about sex. What pleases you? Mm -hmm. Do you like it when I touch you here? Where do you prefer? prefer I, I mean, this. I'm telling you, this is, this is R-rated, okay? So that's why we got the kids. Okay, but this is real. This okay. is real. Do you prefer this? Do you prefer that? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you negotiate. And brothers, you need to listen. Okay? Brothers, listen. Take notes yeah. and find out what makes her click mm -hmm. and have a conversation. Frequency of sex, right? If there's a frequency problem, and because brother, I know her brothers, we work in our mind, we already know there's one week where ain't nothing happening, okay? So we count in our calculator, okay, we know there's one week, <laughs> so I got three weeks <laughs> for something to happen. And when it gets to the end, you almost know when another month is coming. Like, if it don't happen then, brothers, come on, can I get an amen, brothers? You all, you already know. Thank you, brothers. All right. So, so we need to talk about that and, and, and talk about how frequent we're going to have sex, uh, whether it's monthly, whether it's weekly, or whatever it is. You need to negotiate on what works for your family. Now, there are times, church, when we are just so busy, when we're just so busy and we're so stressed, okay, and and just it, it, we're, we're just focused on so many things and it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is okay because you're in a season of life. But don't let that be the norm where you're so busy where you don't prioritize to have sex with your And I think that goes into my next point. So 15 minutes a day of non just talking, touching, maybe talking about sex or just holding hands or whatever. Then you need to at least prepare one to two hours a week of private time. That means no kids. No phone, no. I mean, we know. Okay, so we know it don't. It, this it's not a two-hour event. We're fully aware of that. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, you just plan one to two hours a week that you talk uh, or or even block out time. Cause see, this is what happens. We plan time to eat. 
even when we're not hungry. Y'all go to work in the morning and say, okay, we're going to go to Boudreaux's after lunch. Cause you're not even hungry yet, but you didn't plan out your whole lunch. <laughs> we plan time to go get our hair done. We plan time to go to the barber, but we don't plan sex. Mm. And I think when that happens, we have an intimacy problem because then it doesn't happen at all. Mm. When you don't plan to go to the hairdresser, you don't get no appointment. Mm. Over time, you start looking a little raggedy, right? Mm. Same thing with your marriage. When you don't plan it, when life happens, you just go an extended period of time and it doesn't happen and your marriage falling apart and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Mm. So just schedule private time to just talk and you can set an atmosphere and let it be organic. Like, don't make it awkward. If it doesn't happen during that one and two hours, it's okay. Just don't let it be so uncomfortable like okay well what are we supposed to do now this is our two hours and if you have to reschedule that time reschedule it if something happens okay next week we gonna do this at, i mean you know we're gonna talk about just each up how was your day what happened let's talk about you know i feel this way when there has to be communication okay i just sent you a calendar invite baby Let's okay see. wait okay. a minute check, check your email <laughs> Okay. Um, so another few things that I have before we kind of close out and we're at the end of our sermon, how to keep the lights on. How do you keep your marriage to the point where it's still there, right? Uh, sometimes you get married and you're like, okay, here he go. Uh, here she go with this bonnet on about to come to sleep. So, you know, just talk about it. Kiss passionately. Okay. Even if you're not a kisser, I'm not a kisser. I don't like to kiss for some reason. I don't know why, but kiss passionately, mm. right? Just if it's something your spouse loves to kiss, he, he's a, my husband is the cuddle person. I'm not the cuddle person. I don't know. It's mm. weird, but I've learned that he, his love gift is touch. Mm. And so I love to hug him. He loves for me to hug him. That's just how he is. Um, keep open by sharing talk about what you like what you don't like what's going to happen what's not going to happen even in the marriage context and when it comes to sex married couples talk about the person who feels least comfortable with something that's what you approach mm. that's what you do that's what your extent is okay so if he or she don't like this that's as far as you're gonna go mm. make that a rule within a marriage mm. keep committed to no sex distractions so if you have a scheduled time, schedule that time. Keep physically fit. Mm. We don't talk about keeping yourself healthy and looking nice and being physically fit as well as keeping yourself well-groomed. Hygiene, mm. okay? And I, as a, I guess as a nurse, I approach this because I used to work in pediatric and adolescent gynecology. And I know this is young girls, but I'm sure older women have this problem too. Smell good. Mm. You know, like take a bath. Smell some, I mean, pastor, sometimes I go to bed, I get a shot. Like, oh, you smell so good. I'm like, am I supposed to stink? I'll be sniffing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, buy you some body sprays or make sure you're fresh. You know, take take a bath. You're right. It don't <laughs> smell good if, it, it's, if it's funk on top of it. It's not good. <laughs> so just try to make sure that you keep yourself. And men too, hygiene wise. If you know you've been outside all day playing football, do not come trying to get in the bed funky. Mm. Go take you a bath, get you some deodorant, spray you some good cologne, something, you know. Yeah. So just make sure you keep your hygiene up. But, but for, for physically fit, you'll, you'll, once you are, because sometimes you're insecure about yourself. Yep. So you being in a sexual encounter when you have clothes off, there's some insecurity there. So when you're able to work on yourself, because especially with, with, with ladies, y'all have a lot of insecurities about your body. How do I look? How do I look? How do I look? You look great. You look great. All right. You have so many securities. So if you're able to build that confidence about yourself, you'll feel better. Same thing with men, right? When you are able to look better uh, in in the in the mirror, you know, take care of yourself, get the blood flowing, get eat right, eat right. Uh, you will un, you will your sexual uh, how should I say this church 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 world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll, you'll feel more comfortable uh, encountering in, in, in sexual relations. And I like to give people resources. So if you feel like there's a number to a Christian sex therapist, the husband is a psychiatrist, the wife is a nurse um, who does sex therapy. We have a phone number as well as an email and they do virtual counseling. And I think they take insurance 
And so if there's been problems with, I mean, that's a big part of marriage, y'all. Outside of finances, couples struggle with sex. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have resources. Feel free to reach out to us. Email us at info at yourimagechurch.org, and we can send you the information. That was an uncomfortable sermon. All right. <laughs> but, but hold on, church. We approached it, though. What, what, was that helpful? <laughs> was that helpful? Okay, what helpful? We want we want to be helpful. We want to touch some tough topics, but at the end of the day, we want this is this is sanctification. Families. This is growing. Yes. This is something you're gonna yes. deal with. You have to talk about. We want to make you whole, uh, not just part of the Bible. We want you holistically transformed into the image of God. So I hope this was helpful. And if uh, y'all want me. a book about talking to your kids about sex, I have that too. So if anybody else um, would like that resource. Um, as we close out by your heads, Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you that we are able to approach your throne, Father, um, with holiness, God, knowing that you created sex, God. This is not something we just made up in our minds or we just think it's supposed to be this way, God. You created sex, Father, and you said it was good, Father. And so we are trying to help build families, Father, keep families together so generations can stay together, Father. We're praying, Father, that we continue to allow to speak this word so that people can continue to replicate your image upon this earth, God. We pray for whole families. We pray for families that are healed. We pray for marriages that are struggling right now, Father. Allow the words that we say, even if we are uncomfortable saying them, Father, that you speak life into marriages and you build them, God. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We want to offer an invitation.